November 2012. Astronomers identify a new planet 100 light years from Earth, at least four times more massive than Jupiter, and it's gone rogue. Unlike Earth and all the other objects in our solar system, this planet doesn't orbit a star. It really is lost in space. There could be as many as 200 billion rogue planets in our galaxy. That's as many rogue planets as there are stars in the sky. And one of them could be heading our way. 4.5 billion years ago, a young planet veers into the Earth's orbit. Two collided over 25,000 miles an hour, 12 times faster than a bullet. This impact destroys the smaller planet. The Earth survives, but only just. Debris blasted out at 20,000 miles an hour orbits the molten Earth. Gravity brings the debris together. The result, our moon. Our story begins over 4 billion years ago, in the infancy of our solar system. A swirling disk of gas and dust surrounds the young sun, known as the protoplanetary disk. Within this disk, tiny particles collide and clump together, forming larger and larger bodies known as protoplanets. These protoplanets continue to grow through collisions eventually leading to the formation of our Earth. But our story takes a dramatic turn when a Mars-sized object, known as Theia, collides with the young Earth in a cataclysmic event. The impact sends debris hurtling into space, where it forms a ring of molten rock and dust around Earth. Over time, gravity pulls this material together, forming the moon we know today. The theory can explain so many things about the moon, but it has a huge flaw. It predicts that the Moon is mostly made from the Mars-sized planet, that the Earth and the Moon are made from different materials. But that's not what we see. Rock samples from Apollo gave us our first glimpse at the Moon's epic history. The Earth and the Moon are actually like identical twins. The genetic code of planets is righted on the isotopes of the elements. The Earth and Moon have identical isotopes that means that the Earth and Moon are made from the same materials. Could the long-reigning theory be wrong? Perhaps we need to change our perspective. What do you do when faced with the unknown? Question everything. Early in Earth's history, radioactive elements like uranium would have been much more abundant in its interior. These elements could have become concentrated under Earth's surface due to centrifugal force. The result, a massive underground nuclear explosion. Under this theory, material ejected from this explosion slowly coalesced into the moon we know today. This would easily explain the similarities between Earth and moon. However dramatic, the theory has its own complications. Some doubt that uranium could have been concentrated enough to produce such a powerful eruption. What else could it be hiding? On its way to becoming the barren rock we know today, it may have once held liquid water and even life. Twice in its history, lunar volcanism brought huge amounts of water vapor 
from the moon's interior to the surface. These massive outgassings could have led to surface water and the lunar atmosphere 4 to 3.5 billion years ago. The moon would leave its mark on life in a different, more profound way. It may even be the reason we exist at all. As Earth evolved, the moon's gravity stabilized its tilt, protecting life from extreme swings in climate. Life on Earth would be very different, or even non-existent, without our moon. To know its history is to know our own. We have learned much, but mysteries still remain. To know the full story, we have to go back. More pages of the moon's history are waiting for us.